What would you do? What would you do? What would you do if you saw somebody have an epileptic seizure? If a person has had a seizure, they might have epilepsy. So would you know what to do? Most people with epilepsy have it under control, but seizures are more common than you think. Over the last five years, more than three million Americans have been treated for epilepsy. About eight or nine out of a thousand people have it. In a stadium of 60,000 people, about 500 could have epilepsy. So if you saw somebody have an epileptic seizure, would you know how to react? Would you know what to do? Would you know how to help them? We'll show you how with some simple but effective first aid tips. Hey, you can do this. You can do this. I know you can do this. Hi, my name is Tiki Barber. You probably know me for this. And now you also know me for this. But there's something you probably don't know about me. I had seizures until I was about five years old. Did I let it stand in my way? Not at all. Epilepsy doesn't have to stop anybody. You just have to know what it's all about, work around it, and keep going. And trust me, I know what it takes to keep going. 45, still going! Hi, my name is Shanda Gunn. Most of the time when you see me, I look like this. I play hockey. In fact, I'm the goaltender on the U.S. women's ice hockey team, so I know a thing or two about performing under pressure. I also have epilepsy, but that hasn't stopped me. It's just another challenge. You tap into your strengths, you work hard, and you do what you need to do to meet your goals. Or in my case, to stop them. What's going on? My name is Hoppa. DJ Hoppa. I mix. I scratch. I teach. Good. Good. You may have seen me on TV or on a stage in LA, Hong Kong, Paris, or somewhere on this planet, but when you see me, you probably would never guess that I have epilepsy. I'm living my dream, and I'm here to encourage people to not let anything stop them from living theirs either. So let's break it all down. Epilepsy is a lot more common than most people think. Unfortunately, most people really don't know much about it. So here are a few quick facts. Epilepsy is a neurological condition. That means it affects the body's nervous system. When a person with epilepsy has a seizure, it means they've had a sudden surge of electrical activity in their brain. Seizures themselves aren't a disease. In fact, there are many different reasons why a person can have a seizure. Seizures in epilepsy can be related to a brain injury or family history. In many cases, the cause of the seizure is unknown. There are two main types of seizures. Generalized seizures involve both sides of the brain and often show themselves with involuntary shaking of the arms and legs. Partial seizures involve only one side of the brain and often show themselves with meaningless repeated movements. No matter what kind of seizure a person has, you can help. So now that you know what epilepsy is, here's what it is not. It's not a mental disorder. It's a physical condition of the brain. It's not contagious. You can't catch it. <sighs> and you can't tell who has epilepsy just by looking at them. Most people who have epilepsy control their seizures with medication or other forms of treatment. But the fact is this. Seizures are so common, they can happen almost any time, anywhere. There are lots of different kinds of seizures. Some can't even be noticed, while others can be disabling. The most dramatic epileptic seizure is called a tonic-clonic or grand mal seizure. A tonic-clonic is a generalized seizure that involves the entire brain. There are two phases to a tonic-clonic seizure. The first phase begins with an increase in the tension or tone of the person's muscles. Their body stiffens, and if they're standing, they fall. They might also make a sound as air is forced through their vocal cords. The second, or clonic phase, begins when their muscles rapidly tighten and relax. Their arms and legs can jerk in rhythm. This usually lasts for about a minute or two. During this phase, they might bite their tongue, or cheek, or lip. They might also lose control of their bladder or their bowels as their muscles relax.
How you react when someone is having a tonic-clonic seizure can make a difference. You can help them by following a few simple common sense guidelines. First of all, stay calm. So how hard was that test? It was bad. Yeah, bad? How about horrible? How did I even finish half of it? Oh my god, what's He's happening? having a seizure. Come help me. Okay, let's just stay calm and make sure you're safe. Make sure there's nothing that could harm the person having the seizure. Protect their head from banging against the ground while the person is shaking. Okay, now one of the most important things is to make sure his head is supported. So if you can pass me that jacket, we can Here. put it underneath his head. And this way, he won't hurt his head. Okay. There we go. Make sure the person is lying on their side. And make sure that their head is inclined, not facing down. So if there's saliva in their mouth, it won't go down their airway and choke them. Okay, now if at all possible, we want to try to get him on his side. So, there we go. Alright. Okay, now the reason why we have his head sideways is to make sure his saliva falls out of his mouth and he doesn't choke on it. If you have a watch, time the length of the shaking phase of the seizure. How long now? About a minute and ten. Make the person as safe and as comfortable as you can. So what else can we do, or is this it? No, all we can do right now is make sure he's safe, make sure he's comfortable. We also want to make sure his head is still sideways. There we go. It's OK. Make sure that onlookers are kept away. OK, another thing to keep in mind, if you're in a crowded place and there's like a, a group gathering around, yeah. just tell them to keep moving it along. Do not hold the person down. If they're thrashing around, you could get hurt. You need to stay safe to help them. Shouldn't we be holding him down or something? No, you want to make sure you don't do that, because if you do that, you can hurt him or hurt yourself. Do not put anything in the person's mouth. I heard you're supposed to put something in his mouth. Actually, that's something we don't want to do. You can actually hurt him that way. How? You can break his teeth or you can block his airway. Oh. You just have to let him be. Some people think you can swallow your tongue during a seizure. That's a myth. It's impossible to swallow your tongue. Don't give the person water, food, or any pills until the seizure is over and they're fully alert. So the big question, when do you call 911? If it's the person's first seizure, or if you don't know whether they've had a seizure before, or if you're with someone you know has epilepsy and they have a seizure that lasts more than five minutes. Or if the person's injured or vomits, call 911 to get professional medical help. Above all, be sensitive and supportive and ask others to do the same. Stay calm. Make sure the person is lying on their side. And make sure that their head is inclined, not facing down. So if there's saliva in their mouth, it won't go down their airway and choke them. Time the length of the shaking phase of the seizure. Make the person as safe and as comfortable as you can. Do not hold the person down. Do not put anything in the person's mouth. Don't give the person water, food, or any pills until the seizure is over and they're fully alert. When do you call 911? If it's the person's first seizure, or if you don't know whether they've had a seizure before, or if you're with someone and they have a seizure that lasts more than five minutes. Or if the person's injured or vomits, call 911 to get professional medical help. Now you know some things about epilepsy. You know that seizures can happen to just about anybody, anywhere, anytime. And now you know that making sure someone who's having a seizure stays safe is really not a big deal. Hey, you can do this. You can do this. You can definitely do this.